Hey there, my name is Albert Wesley, and in this video, we'll be talking about changing animations. So what I've set up here are a bunch of physics objects, some static and some dynamic, and we'll begin by changing the animation of the ball. So if we open up this sprite object, we'll see that this bouncing ball has two animations. The first animation with a single frame, and the second with two. Because the first animation has a single frame, it's considered finished already. Whereas the second animation has two frames, so it needs to finish its first frame, and then it would be considered finished. If we didn't want animations to finish at all, we could click loop here on the end. But for this video, we'll leave this unchecked. We could change animations based on the numbers, but for this object we're going to be changing them by name. This one will be fine, and this one will be hurt. So now to change animations, we need to go to the event sheet. We'll create a new event with the condition if the bouncing ball has a physics collision with the breaking box object, and then we'll add an action and search for animation. When you do this, you'll find all of the actions related to animations, including changing the animation by number or name, changing the animation speed, the current frame, and pausing and playing the animations. For this object, we're going to be changing the animation by name. We'll select the ball, and then when we click into the text box, we'll be given our options. And here we're going to select Hurt. And next we'll create another event, and click to add a condition, and we'll search for animation again, and we'll see all of the conditions related to animations. Checking to see if the animation is paused or finished, what the animation number or name is, and what the current frame of the animation is. We're going to be checking by name, so we'll select the ball again, and select Hurt, and then we'll add if the animation is finished, and then we'll paste down the set animation action and change it to Fine. So now when the ball hits one of these blocks, its animation will change to Hurt, and then if the animation is Hurt, and the animation has finished playing, then it will change back to Fine. So now if we preview the game, we'll see the ball bouncing around and whenever it hits one of the boxes, it'll change its animation to hurt. Until it gets stuck. Next we'll be changing by number. If we open up the breaking box sprite object, we can see how the animations are set up. Zero being fine, one being a little damaged, and two being very damaged. And so if we go to the event sheet, and paste down the condition from the earlier event, add trigger once, create a sub-event, and add an action, to change the number of the animation of the breaking block by adding 1. And then we can add another sub-event, where if the animation number is equal to 2, then we delete the breaking box. But we need to put that one above the number change event, because otherwise it would change the number and then immediately delete it. And now if we preview the game, we can see that when it collides with a box, it changes the animation number down until it breaks. And now to make it a little more impactful, We'll add a particle emitter. We'll create a new event with the condition if the animation is zero, and an action to create the particle object at the x and y coordinates of the center of the box. And then create a repeat x number of times sub event, in this case once, and move the create object action down into that event. And then we'll copy and paste this event down, changing it to check if the animation is number one, and then repeating two times and then copy that sub-event down again, this time repeating three times, and then moving the delete box action down to a sub-event below that so it triggers once after spawning in all of the debris. And then we need to add the action change the z-order to zero so it puts the debris when it spawns it behind all of the boxes. So now when we preview the game, you'll see that when the bouncing ball collides with a box and its animation is zero, it'll spawn a little bit of debris and then when it breaks the box, it'll spawn a lot more. And now to show how to do it for a specific frame. Using this platformer example that we made earlier, I added in an event with the conditions if the player's current frame is 1 while they're running, create a dust particle at the point I created called dust, and then change the Z order to 0, and do this once. So as the character's running, it will spawn dust particles at their feet. 
And now we're going to use both the numbers and the names for animations to show you how that would work. So I have an object here I've called object with a bunch of different animations, all with names to match. So I'll put a bunch of these in scene and then go to the event sheet. I'll create an event with the condition any button pressed once and then change the animation of that object based on a number that's equal to and then I'll type in the expression random in range with the range being 0 and 5 because there's six animations and 0 counts as a number and then I'll create a second event where if the animation of the object is spike it'll delete the player if the player is in collision with the object. And now if I preview the game, I can randomize the objects until I find a spike. And then if I jump into the spike, the player dies. This has been a tutorial on changing animations in GDevelop. As always, be sure to comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorial you want to see next time. Maybe we'll add it to the pile. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.